This video is brought to you by Chromium Midmod Design, based in New Hope, Pennsylvania. It's Eric here from Chromium Midmod Design. I had Bryce in the dust shuttle over the other day, and I told him I'd put together a short video on the whitening or retro brighting process. Yes, there are several videos online about this process, and invariably each one of these videos wants to send you either to their website or to Amazon to buy some ingredients. Uh, I may add overpriced ingredients. If you are going to RetroBright, go to your local hair supply wholesaler and buy the hydrogen peroxide developer. It comes in 50%, 40%, 30%, and 20%. Of course, the 50% is stronger and will work a little quicker. We'll talk about that in a moment. The second ingredient is the lightener and this happens to be clairol brand but there are several brands out there it's a powdered lightener you add one scoop of the powder to about four ounces of the developer the third item that you need is plastic wrap and i suggest you get yourself ample plastic wrap because you'll go through it pretty quickly here we have a parsons table which is yellowed with age the yellowing is typically caused by the fire retardant used in the plastic, which somehow reacts with light and forms this yellowy brown color. This table at this point looks like it should be thrown away. Let me bring, bring you through the retro writing process and see how we can bring this table back to life. Before we go any further, I really wanna point out that while these ingredients are used in hair salons everywhere, that doesn't necessarily make them friendly or safe. They are pretty harsh. I suggest having a very good set of safety glasses and also vinyl gloves, wear a long sleeve t-shirt so that none of these ingredients can get onto your skin. They will cause irritation and in the eyes they could cause severe damage. Follow all of the instructions by the manufacturer. Again, wearing your PPE, the safety glasses, the rubber gloves, and for this step, also a mask, which everybody should have at this point in time. Add one scoop of the lightener to about four ounces of the developer. Mix thoroughly. Here we're mixing the powder into the solution. Mix it up well, you got plenty of time, don't worry about it. Get the powder nicely wetted and dispersed into the solution, it'll work much better. Let me take a couple seconds and talk about the factors affecting the speed of the whitening process. The first one is the strength of the hydrogen peroxide solution. The stronger the solution, the faster the results will come. Second one is time. And while I could say I wish this could be done in one hour, generally I plan on six to eight hours for whitening. Um, I've left pieces of plastic in there for up to 12 hours. Third thing is the temperature. You can't do this in the middle of the winter outside. It works, but it works very slowly. Uh, the temperature accelerates the process, and I would say above 50, you can do it, but somewhere between 70 and 90 is a good temperature. Of course, um, you're gonna need a good day to do it in. Uh, the contact. So you want the solution to contact the plastic. You don't want it to dry out, and that is why we wrap it in plastic, right? It stops the solution from drying out. The UV light intensity, you have to do this on a sunny day, not an overcast day. Um, I actually have built a fish tank that is wrapped in UV lights and I do objects in the fish tank. Um, sorry, the UV lights are backed with tin foil. And then I do objects in the, inside the fish tank and I turn on all the UV lights and then you can do it inside and you can control the temperature and you can control all the conditions. Uh, the starting point. And that is how badly was the object yellowed or browned and how blotchy was it? Generally, uh, more blotchy items may take a little bit more work and a little bit more process because you have to get the darkest spots out and uh, they may still appear as stains in the end. We're now painting on the Retrobite solution. You put it on pretty thick, like a latex paint. You make sure that everything is covered and then we're gonna wrap it in a sheet of cling wrap or plastic wrap. 
You can see that I've put a layer of cling wrap over top of the RetroBrite solution. This is really just to stop the evaporation and to keep a little bit of the heat inside. We're gonna let this sit for about eight hours. Uh, and at that point, we hope that the table will be white. We'll take some checks during the ripening time and we will possibly add some more solution in about four hours just to move it around a little bit and make sure that we're covering everything. Again, you have to put on a fairly thick layer like you're putting on a thick latex paint. So a quick check on the tables, which are now basking in the sun, getting a hopefully anti-tan. Um, you can see that the retrobright solution or whitening solution has some kind of a reaction. It tends to foam a little bit, uh, which is good when it's under the plastic. Uh, that way you can spread it around and you can uh, adjust it if there are some spots that are lacking solution. And uh, this is about uh, uh, this is about 90 minutes into the process and I think you can already see that there is some uh, lightning going on. Um, the tables are a little bit wider, uh, but it's still early. So uh, with that, we're going to really close off part one of the whitening video and uh, tomorrow we're going to do part two and you'll see how much whitening has actually happened to the tables and we'll talk a little bit about how to address some of the other defects on them. Uh, thanks again, Eric from Chromium Midmod Design in New Hope, PA.